The call-out comes twice a week on average at RAF Valley Mountain Rescue. While there are mountains to climb and people to climb them, there will be emergencies to scramble for too. Winter on Snowdon has a beguiling beauty. It hides the danger of getting lost, getting injured, or getting exposed to the murderous cold of mountain winds. Many more lives would be taken if it wasn't for the rescue organisations, the efficiency of their machines, the dedication of their men and women, and nowadays the speed, skill and trust of rescue dogs. He is Andy Collow from the Yorkshire Dales. She's a border collie called Corrie. Both are qualified members of the Search and Rescue Dogs Association. Get away! A few dozen dogs and their handlers are pioneering new methods of search and rescue on Britain's mountains. They come from a variety of working breeds, but they can all run all day and still ask for more. In rough country, and especially in snow, a dog can search a hillside as fast as perhaps a score of men. And in mountain rescue, speed saves lives. At home in Yorkshire, Andy and Alison Collow have three dogs. Corrie is as soft as any family pet, but she's the case-hardened veteran of two years' intensive training and rigorous examination. For her daughter, Gail, just 13 weeks old, that same course is just beginning. Many dogs never make the grade, yeah. and the course is almost as severe a test for Andy Collo, who'll train Gail. He and Alison were already members of the rescue team at nearby Clapham when they got their first dog. Gail, 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 Gail. A friend of mine came along to the rescue headquarters one night and said that he'd got a dog to train, and Gail. would we help him to train it by acting Gail. as casualties flying Gail. out on the moor? Having seen his dog work a couple of times, I was so impressed that uh, I decided it might not be a bad thing to find out a little more about Come it on. and uh, Come on. perhaps get Come one on. of my own. Come on. We just answered an advert in the local newspaper, free to good home sheepdog type Come bitch on. with spotted legs and it went on from there. Come a puppy's first and biggest lesson is to listen to its master's voice, not to its own instinct to run with the pack. Gail, lie down. Good girl. What a good girl. That's a good girl. Good girl. Yep. Now sit. Girl, sit. And lie. Good girl. That's a good girl. The training starts with basic obedience, sitting, yep. staying, Probably. healing, or yep. being able to recall okay. the dog on command. Probably. And before the dog's permitted to go on to search Gale. training, it's got to be good with the basic obedience side first. It's very, very important. And the dog's got to be absolutely safe with hillstock because we're working out on the open fell. The dog may be a considerable distance away from the handler, sometimes even out of sight of the handler. We've got to be able to trust the dog to be out there working, not rounding up sheep, or even worse. Speak again. Come. Andy and Alison live in the heart of sheep country, in Horton in Ribblesdale. They're teachers by profession. All mountain rescue work is voluntary, except where the police or RAF take part. Where one member of the family is involved, the whole household tends to get sucked in. Even young Lewis Collow will know all about it if there's a call out. The Collows are the only husband and wife team, each with a trained dog, though Lewis's arrival has temporarily interrupted Alison's work with her dog, Nell. She's on the right of the picture, playing tug-of-war with Gail. Many working dogs in farming country are confined to the barn or to kennels. These are part of the family. 
As well as training Gail, Andy uses an exercise in North Wales to keep Corrie's skills fine-tuned. Search dogs don't follow a scent along the ground like bloodhounds. Such trails wander about and get confused with other smells. Instead, they run at right angles to the wind. Their noses scan, like radar, the whole hill upwind of them. Grapevine! Well, I've sent Corrie off now, and what she's trying to do is to locate human scent blown along in the wind. And when she recognises that human scent, she'll follow it into its source and locate the casualty. Fine, girl! Go on! Away you go! Away you go! Now, it's important to put the dog well out away in front and to both sides to cover the maximum amount of ground possible. Because a search dog can cover such a lot more ground than a group of ordinary mountain rescue line searchers. Go on away! Go on! Away you go! Go on away! Away you go! Go on! Now, it's important the dog's very obedient and that you can put the dog exactly where you want it to do. You can move it around crags, in and out of boulders. Fine, girl! Get away! Go on! Away! Find! Go on! Away! Now, in difficult conditions, this is where the search dog really comes into its own right. On this way! This way! Get away! Away, find! Now she's clearing that craggy area nicely and if there's any human scent in that region she'll uh, recognise that, follow it into its source and uh, find the body. In fact, I think she's found now because the way she's running, I think she's picked something up and she's going into the body now. Finding the body, who is a perfectly healthy and carefully placed volunteer, is half the job. The next stage is to tell and fetch your handler. Corrie's favoured method involves a great deal of noise. Good girl, show me! A dog's been known to scent a body under 20 feet of snow, where a human searcher wouldn't have thought of looking. The handler must also trust his animal. Don't just stuff this, Frank. I'm surprised that we don't get many more accidents on it because it's so sharp. Back in the Dales, Gail has her first lesson in how to make a find, a controlled game of hide-and-seek. When Frank disappears down a shake hole, it's her instinct to go and see what's come on, happened. Gail. Come on, Gail. Good girl. Gail, come on. Where's he going? Come on, Gail. Where's he going, Gail? Where's he going? Gail. Where's he going, Gail? Gail. Come on, Gail. Come on. Come on, Gail. Come on. 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 Most dogs will have some sort of instinct, some girl, instinctive curiosity. And I think that what we're trying to do is to harness that, to channel their energy, to channel their natural ability in a particular direction to suit our particular needs within mountain rescue. What a good girl! We do encourage the dogs to go in to bodies, living bodies or articles of clothing during rescue practices. The dogs have to see that what they're doing is a game, that it's, it, it's fun. They've got to be enjoying their work, and in the early stages, as with Gail, we have to keep the training simple and short, and slowly extend the distance which she's working, and the length of time which she's working. Show me, lass! What a good girl, tell me! Good girl! What a good girl! Come on! And then there's the negative training, what you stop them doing. One reason it's taking so long for rescue dogs to get established in Britain, after the idea was developed in Switzerland, is that our best walking and climbing regions are also strongholds of sheep farming. Don't oh, you look at that sheep! Heel! Heel! Come in! Heel! 
Dogs can take a terrible toll of the hill flocks. At first, many farmers were outraged at the idea of more dogs running off the lead over the mountains. It's vital that Gale and all search dogs learn to find sheep familiar and boring. That's not instinctive. At summer's end, Gail faces her first exam in Ennerdale in the Lake District. The Search and Rescue Dogs Association sets its own stringent tests, and Gail is to be assessed for basic obedience. If she fails, her career could be over at ten months old. Right, Andy. New dog, start again. Right? Some basic obedience. Uh, working on a line basically up and down here. Uh, we'll do it on the lead and then off the lead. So if you position yourself to start in that direction, I'll give you a Gail, heel. Gail, sit. sit. Right, nice and steady. Dog and handler, forward. Heel. About, turn. It's a little bit more encouragement to your dog. I think she's looking up at you. She's just wanting a little bit again. Gail, heel. Left, heel. turn. Come on. Dog and handler, halt. Down. Take your lead off. Good girl. Pretty good girl. Dog and handler, Heel. forward. Heel. Heel. Properly. Heel. Right turn. Gail. Properly. Heel. Prepare for advanced either sit or down. Dog and handler, advanced sit. Lie down. Good girl. About turn. Pick up your dog. Gail heel. Gail heel. Dog and handler, halt. That completes that exercise. Thank you. Long down four. And at last, police dog handler Neville Sharp hands down his judgment. Stock test, very good. Andy Collow, heel on lead, very good. Long down, very good. Recall, very good. Speak on command, very good, and his stock test was very good. And that completes the six dogs, which at this stage of part one will all be recommended to progress to part two. By the winter, Gail's grown bigger and stronger, ready to tackle the tougher conditions she'll work in if she qualifies. Because the wilder the country and the harsher the weather, the more likely walkers and climbers are to get lost in it. So it's back to the Lake District for a weekend course run by the Search and Rescue Dogs Association. Your gear, your kit, crampons, ice axes are to stay inside your sacks. No ice axes on the outside and no crampons. There are sections of the association, a charity surviving on donations and sponsorship, in most of the mountainous areas of Britain now. We'll use the winching harness. We'll use Penny's dog here. We have regular training weekends where the few search dogs from this particular area get together and we organise a regional training day or evening. It's very important to keep the dogs in trim and to get them used to working in winter conditions. And if we can get the casualties of bodies for the evening or the day, to bury them under the snow and get the dogs to work and find them. It's a different technique and a different skill and it's a form of advanced training. Wiggle! 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 I don't take Collie out quite so much now as I used to. She gets plenty of practice on the real thing but with Gail she needs a lot of practice three or four times a week and it has to be like that until she's fully qualified. And if I want her to uh, pursue a particular skill, then I'll have to train hard for that skill, and the dog likewise. Come down. Come down. Two years ago, training was a five-minute game Gail played in a field as a puppy. Now she's back in Keswick in the depth of winter with the other hopefuls to face her final assessment. Andy is about to discover if the long months of training in all weathers have given him a rescue dog or if he needs to start all over again.
Their first challenge is to convince the farmers that gale is no danger to their stock. Eu. 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 In an exercise that almost exactly reverses one man and his dog, a working sheepdog will drive a flock of sheep right up to Gale and then past her. One wrong move and she's out. Gale's on her own now. Andy can say nothing, do nothing, just trust his dog. The sheepdog has the same instincts as Gale, but an utterly different training. Gale? Gale? Lie down. See you lie. Gail? Lie down. Yeah. Right, thank you. Gail. No disasters, but no celebrations yet either, as Neville Sharp keeps his thoughts and his marks to himself. Whether it's deliberate or not, the assessment becomes a test of nerve for the handlers. Gail. They have to stew overnight, knowing that the real trial is still to come, the question they're in this whole thing to answer. Can they find bodies out on the mountains? At the moment I feel quite worried that uh, I'm not going to be good enough to pass. I think probably most handlers in my position would feel exactly the same. I've trained hard and I've got a good dog, a very good dog, but. I don't really know whether that's going to be good enough for the grade. And I'm worried. I'm very worried. Worried sick. But the next four days will tell whether we've worked hard enough and whether we meet the required standard. Because it is a high standard. It has to be. On the final morning, Keswick looks sharp and bright under the February sky. Visibility looks good as Andy prepares for the last of three searches on unfamiliar mountains. What he doesn't know is that he and Gale are due to finish on a horrendous fell side covered with huge boulders and impenetrable gorse bushes. Or that when he gets to his mountain rendezvous with Assessor Neville Sharp, it will have started to snow. Right, your area this morning, Andy, is uh, this dry gully, which you can see runs from here up to the ridge. Hmm. Take the ridge line, cross by the trees, and follow the ridge all the way, right down to the road. And then the bottom road back to here is your boundary. So that's your full area. OK. Take into account the conditions. You can tell me how you propose to work the area now. Well, looking at the way the snow's blowing, wind's coming down the valley, Collecting boundary here, yeah. cover my boundaries just outside my boundary on that bo on that downwind yeah. side. Taking that gully. Taking the gully. Yeah. I shall probably work from the road, send the dog up this triangle of vegetation. Yeah. Yeah. Try and get the dog around the top of the scree. Yeah. Collecting right. anything off there, probably bring it down the middle of the scree. Yeah. Working it up and down and along. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Best of luck. Right. Okay. The dog and the handler are working as a team. During the annual assessment, it's both the dog and the handler who were put through the paces. We're testing the dog to see whether it can uh, work a long distance away, cover ground effectively, quickly, and ultimately locate the body which has been set out there. The exercises are set up to be uh, difficult exercises because we're working under difficult circumstances during a call out. There's a lot of tension on a call out and there's a lot of tension on the annual course. Andy and Gail are trying to find a straight-ish line through the boulders at right angles to a wind that keeps changing direction. It's as severe a test as the assessors below could have devised. The handler really has to concentrate on crossing the boulder field himself and working his dog at the same time. And most of the time he's on the field, he's out of visual contact from the dog. Also. Dotted amongst the boulder field, there's the heavy gauze bushes and the patches of gorse, and again, he's losing contact uh, with the dog visually, uh, and it is a very severe test and probably the hardest test on the on the course. 
the wind will be moving about in all sorts of, sort of directions which makes it very difficult indeed for the dog to actually work but his overall run this morning is quite good Search Dog Andy from Search Dog Neville, pass your message over. Search Dog Neville, I've just made the find, just made the find, it's very difficult to in here. What Andy doesn't say is that to show him where the body was, Gail fetched him through every thorn of those gorse bushes. Nevertheless, he can come off the mountain with a sense of relief. There's nothing more he and Gail can do. Your message, over. He set off and he did, an, he did a, a, a cross. At the end of the day, the assessors appointed by the association compare notes. They've watched the dogs not only over the last few days, but over the past two years. Character as well as performance are under scrutiny, and handler as well as dog. And he did all that, the hard bit. At the presentation, there's a lot of pride at stake. There's a shield for the best dog of the year, and two years ago, Alison won it with Nell. Andy's first priority, though, is simply to pass. Jeff Jackson and his dog Tess. Andy Collo with his dog Gail. But there's disappointment over the shield. Andy was pipped on that last mountain by a relative newcomer from Derbyshire. Oh, well, I'm very pleased with the results. Um, I wanted to have a search dog, and I've got a search dog, and she can go on call-outs with me now. I wish I'd been able to get the shield. It would have been nice, but obviously there was somebody who was just that little bit better. It, uh, it doesn't worry me that I've not got the shield, and uh, I don't think I should make a big issue of it, because when all's said and done, we're all on the annual course to have our dogs tested for the suitability of search dogs and she's come out of it a search dog what more could i wish for a chance for gail to prove herself at the real thing perhaps Corey wasn't much older than gail is now when her big opportunity came at one o'clock in the morning hello two three oh Okay, Alison, Alison, it's a call out. Yeah. Two people, Langdale. Langdale. Langdale is some 50 miles yes. to the northwest of Horton in the Lake District. Two walkers have failed to return at night, and a preliminary search by local dogs has failed to find them. Hi. 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 50 minutes after being called out, Andy is being briefed in the mountain rescue hut in Ambleside. The uh, shires through Red Town onto the Grintles. So Andy, when you get up to Green Hall, and uh, then if you can probably work your way up to the Easty Rigs and then on to War Gap, it will be far better. By the time that you're all on the move, we should have a link up on the top of uh, Bowfeller radio link. Bow Fell, where the missing couple is thought to be, is nearly 3,000 feet high, two miles from the nearest road, and occupies several square miles of the huge Score Fell mountain range. The radio link on top will form the center of a circle. Handlers and dogs will try to converge on it, as if following the spokes of a wheel inwards. Corrie has a chemical light stick fixed to her identification coat. Not so she can see, but so Andy can see her. Where, well, lass? When you're out on a search like this at night, you're working alone with your dog, quite often in places that you're totally unfamiliar with. And it's difficult trying to read a map and speak into the radio and work your dog and safely navigate your way onto the hill and search for somebody. Sometimes it's uh, mind stretching to pick your way using map and compass and uh, working through the 
very difficult weather conditions that we've quite often got to. But uh, I certainly have known nothing like it in the ordinary walk of life. Just you and your dog and the mountain. Good girl. Go on. Go on. Up, 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 up. Good girl. Dawn eventually arrives on the fells with a light mist. There's still no sign of the walkers, a married couple from the Manchester area. Corrie has run all night, but in the mist and snow, the best chance of finding them still lies with her strength and speed, and that uncanny sense of smell which saves her from falling over precipices too. And at a few minutes past nine, eight hours after the call out, comes the excited barking that tells Andy the search is over. I've located the two missing people were 200 yards. There were 14 deaths in the Lake District alone last year, 24 the year before. As this reconstruction shows, these walkers were well equipped and fit enough to be led off the mountain. But search and rescue dogs, able to find the lost and injured before exposure takes its toll, are already saving lives. Gail will take her place in a young but proud tradition.